This snapshot of Farron OS was released at the end of December 2019 and it's said to be the biggest release in the history of Farron OS so far. The installer we have here is a live session that seemed to think that it was a legit install, like one with a welcome app and everything. For funsies, I went ahead and changed the theme to a dark one, which probably wasn't a good idea because the installer Calamares or Calamaris or how, I'm still not sure how to pronounce that. Anyways, the installer didn't know what to do with the theme, so the styling kind of looks like broken, but that's not necessarily Farron OS's fault. The installer itself is a basic no frills installer though. It does practically the same thing that Ubuntu's Ubiquity does, except that it didn't ask me to connect to a network. Now I could have done that through the live session itself, but it's notable that the installer doesn't ask for that at all. After the install and initial login, we're greeted with a KDE session and a pretty unique welcome app. The welcome app itself provides the option of installing restricted codecs, which is something that Ubiquity does with the Ubuntu installer. And like the installer, this welcome app seemed to be unaware of my network connection, or I guess lack thereof. And if you try to install the codecs without a network connection, it just like fails. After the codecs are installed, we see a theme and layout picker. It's interesting that there's so many different layouts here and I tested them all and they're all functional, but I'm not gonna go through each of them in this video. We're just gonna keep things sane and I'm gonna use the default layout. There's also an option to set up night color or redshift or nightlight or whatever the hell people are calling it nowadays. And at the end of the welcome app, it's basically just documentation and some system specs. Now we'll look at resource usage, starting with the overall install size. Farron OS weighed in at 9.2 gigabytes, a sizable footprint for a brand spanking new install. Now a viewer of the previous DistroDelves episode recommended that I use free to check memory usage, and with it, we see that only 707 megabytes of memory is being used. HTOP wasn't installed by default, but that's okay, we can install it from the default repos. In HTOP, we see that the memory usage is about the same, with the plasma shell consuming the lion's share of it. There were about 94 tasks running with 133 threads. Now, Farron OS is a unique distro in a lot of different ways. It's the first distro that I've ever seen that uses Vivaldi as the default web browser. It also mixes GTK and Qt apps together and uses a theming engine to kind of like glue them together so they look like, you know what it looks like when GTK and Qt apps are next to each other, they just look weird. Farron OS manages to make them all look like normal and decent. In many ways, I kind of feel like Farron OS is almost like a spiritual successor to Mint KDE, which was discontinued recently. There are a few things that I find somewhat strange, like the panel icon hover, the lack of tooltips on the start menu thing, and a few other things. Farron OS also seems to ship with at least a couple custom apps, such as this uh, strange little maintenance application. There's also some really cool backgrounds, including some attributed ones from Unsplashed. Good choice. I always love seeing some unique backgrounds packaged into Linux distros. It's a little thing, but I like it. Now, remember when I said that Farron OS kind of feels like a spiritual successor to Linux Mint KDE? Well, it uses Mint Software Manager too. I had the same issues with the mirrors as I did on Mint. Most of them like didn't work. Now, even when I sat here and waited some time for them to refresh, the few that came back were dreadfully slow. The default mirrors worked, so I just went ahead and ran the update and was done with it. Farron OS does include some disabled PPAs by default, such as the NVIDIA PPA, which is freaking awesome. I went ahead and installed the default and recommended NVIDIA driver for this video, though if I had enabled the NVIDIA PPA, I could have gotten a later driver that way. Once the display drivers are installed, we'll reboot, log in, and check the system startup time. System D Analyze tells us that between the graphical target and the user space, it brings us to a total of about 34 seconds to reach the desktop. Yikes. Now I was pleased to see the Farron OS logo and NeoFetch here. As you can see, Farron is running kernel version 5 with 2,319 packages installed. The desktop is Plasma, with Kwin as the window manager. The theme is Farron Cyan. The icon set is called Inspire, and the terminal font is Deja Vu Sans Mono. Following in the footsteps of Linux Mint, Farron OS also supports app images and flat packs the exact same. My app images here worked right out of the box after some noticeable startup time. Humorously, I found that my flat packs here installed significantly faster on Farron OS over Mint. In fact, I think I could say that all of the apps I installed as part of the test installed faster on Farron over Linux Mint. 
Maybe there was some kind of issues with my internet when I recorded the Linux Mint video, but everything installed really fast. I also noticed that Lutris was available from the Software Center, that's pretty darn cool. And of course, since Farin OS is based on Ubuntu, I was able to install the TeamViewer package for Ubuntu and have it work just fine, just like Linux Mint. And in the way of codec support, every one of these files worked just fine. All of the media files opened in VLC, which is actually how I prefer it. And again, like Linux Mint, Farin OS had some troubles playing the FFV1 file, though it didn't feel like it was as much as what Mint had. And now it's time to look at volumes and network sharing, the external SSD mounted without a hitch, which is always great. But what isn't great is that there's no clear way of setting up Samba. Not just on the folder context menu, but not in the toolbar, not anywhere. When I looked at the start menu thing for apps relating to Samba, I found something called Samba Share, which appeared to be broken. KDE also has a somewhat lame built-in thing for Samba, but it just like sets the defaults for connections and I'm not even sure if it's used. Despite these issues, I was able to connect my Windows machine via Samba from the server connection dialog. And likewise, using SSH to my Linux workstations. There weren't any issues when I used the connection dialog. And there shouldn't be any surprise that printer connectivity was perfect. My printer was detected and I was able to use it, configure it, whatever, without using sudo for anything. Always a big plus. So if you watched the previous episode of Distro Delves, I have a section where I use OBS to stream to Mixer. I have that in my video checklist, but unfortunately it looks like the Flatpak version of OBS doesn't seem to work with Mixer. I've had issues with the Flatpak version of OBS streaming to Mixer's FTL, but right now it doesn't even seem like RTMP works, like the normal sort of streaming method. This is not Farron OS's fault, this probably has something to do with how OBS was packaged or built before it was packaged as a Flatpak. And unfortunately, while I thought I was streaming it, I connected up my PS4 controller via Bluetooth, and since I wasn't streaming it, I can't show you the footage, but it connected perfectly. It didn't dick around disconnecting and reconnecting like it did on Linux Mint. And believe it or not, I was able to play GTA 5 with my PS4 controller right out of the box on Farron OS. Steam apparently didn't save my previous gameplay to Steam Cloud, so I'm playing the intro here, but I'm using the controller, which felt great. The game ran alright, but I think I'd reduce the graphics just a bit to squeeze a few more frames out of it. Now I wanted to mix things up for the gameplay portion of the video, so I included some footage of The Sims 4, which ran okay. It defaulted to low settings all around at 720p, which seemed a little strange. I'm playing it at 1080p at medium settings here, and it is a little sluggish, but it's playable. And for the native Linux game, I thought I'd try out Assault Cube, which was, uh, it was something. I mean, the gameplay was smooth and it installed just fine and all that, but wow. This game feels sort of like a thrift store Counter-Strike 1.6. And for the Geekbench tests, we're going to be looking at the CPU scores, but we're also going to look at some Vulkan scores, which we haven't done yet in the series. All of these scores are available on the Geekbench website if you're interested in checking them out for yourselves. Linux Mint beat Farron OS in all but like two tests in the CPU benchmark. Still not exactly sure why Linux Mint is so darn good at these tests, but I'm excited to see future distros to see if they can dethrone Mint, who is clearly the undisputed winner here. And in the Vulkan series of tests, Linux Mint takes the trophy here too, coming in just marginally higher here than Farron OS. Now I've compared Farron OS to Linux Mint KDE a couple times in the video, and I, I want to clarify, Farron OS is very much its own thing, it has its own identity, and the developer developers are very proud of it. And they should be, it's very unique and cool distro. The website also explicitly thanks Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Mint, as well as GNOME and KDE for basically everything that they've done. Farron OS is an interesting little distro with a very unique take on the traditional Linux desktop. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you enjoy distro delves. And if you did, I have lots more distros to look at and non-distros to look at in the future. I'm really excited about this series and I hope you guys are too. If you'd like to support me and the channel, you can find me on Patreon, there's Coffee, and of course you can follow me on Twitter, you can talk to me there too. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.